Oh, sorry about that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, air pollution today. Um, so uh, I'm just going to quickly run through what you need to do for this. So you can see here. <coughs> Whoa. So you're going to start out by going to uh, Brain Pop, and uh, you can see the, uh, the username and password for our school. Um, and that'll answer these questions. <clears throat> um, and then when you get to this part, um, you're going to use this information. Read this information over very carefully. Look through the this uh, really amazing chart that goes to, into just about everything in terms of air pollution. Um, take note of all these like key sources. Um, one of the major problems are in these boxes here. The arrows actually represent the gases. Um, so the problem, the sources are down here. The gases are the arrows, and the boxes represent the problem. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, a little chart there. Um, and then they will use that to answer all these questions right in here, including the chart. Okay, ozone depletion. Um, you're going to use this information here. Answer those questions. I watch another brain pop. Fill out the chart while watching the brain pop. Um, some stuff about global warming. Um, read over that very carefully. Uh, we will watch this video in class, the, the Eyes and Eye video, to answer those questions. Um, you're going to fill out this global warming practice. When you finish this, I want you to make sure that you um, um, please check with Mr. S when done. I want to make sure we got the correct answers for those. Okay. And uh, here's where we're going to come in here. We're going to, I'm going to do a quick little global warming summary. So now I want you to stop the video. If you haven't done up to this point, don't start now. Okay, don't start this until you uh, watch, do all the other stuff before this. Okay, so first off, um, what's happening here? Um, so this problem we have an increase in what are the things called green house gases okay and our ability to reduce though we're, we're producing more of these greenhouse gases we're producing more and we're removing less so what's happening is this this layer of greenhouse gases kind of insulates the earth and uh, the idea is that as the temperature goes or as this area gets thicker and thicker and thicker that the amount of heat trapped will increase so um, so what are the gases that are causing it uh, the two major players there's others and that chart that we saw from above there will be there but methane and CO2 are the two major players. Now, I'm even going to circle CO2 because this is the one that we seem to be contributing the most increase to. And it's also the one that, uh, you know, trees have the least ability to, or have the most ability to remove if we let them. So what are some human activities that contribute to this? So a lot of burning of fossil fuels. So if you remember, fossil fuels are come from organic compounds, so therefore they have carbon in them. And we're burning them, and that re removes the carbon and puts it into the form of CO2. So we're burning these fossil fuels, driving cars, uh, factories, etc. Um, so what contributes to that problem also is we also are deforesting, deforestation. because. Plants, if you remember, part of photosynthesis was to take CO2 out. Ah, so if we have less trees, then we can take less CO2 out of the atmosphere. And that's, therein lies the issue. Okay, so what does all of this result in? Um, as the temperature goes up, so we get increased temperature, but that, that's obvious. So obviously you'll never be able to use that on a um, regions exam but um, what can you say is that polar ice is melting uh, we can also say things like coastal flooding now we're not seeing major coastal flooding 
but we're talking about um, increases of millimeters per year. Doesn't sound like much, but you give it a hundred years, that you know it starts to add up. Coastal flooding, um, changes in weather patterns. So that's where the term this climate change comes from is that we're changing our weather patterns, we're changing our climate. So we have more an increase in violent storms. Now think about when do violent storms occur? You know, things like hurricanes, tornadoes. Usually when it's warm out, summertime, okay? So we're having an increase in these violent storms. We're also changing the pH of our oceans. So we're, we're actually decreasing the pH of the oceans and that's leading to a lot of problem with ocean life okay so how can we help we gotta we gotta look back at this this is what's causing the problem so let's let's um, drive less okay or um, you know that could mean like carpooling which I know a lot of people won't really want to do but probably a better so a better way to do this is find an alternative alternative fuel. We've got a lot of hybrid cars, we've got a lot of those kind of things nowadays. So, you know, that those possibilities are out there. Okay. Um, we also want to um, plant more trees. Okay. Um, trees pull out a lot of that CO2 from the atmosphere. Okay. Um, conserve energy. Remember, you know, when you conserve that's a serve energy when you flip on that light switch that electricity is coming from some sort of power plant and that power plant um, when it comes down to it is burning fossil fuels to create that energy for the most part you know there are we're getting more and more increases in these alternative energies so one thing I like about looking at the um, gas and electric bill is once in a while they'll send you, tell you well you have this much percentage to come from this power source and this power source etc so that kind of is a good thing so I like to see what we're doing there okay all right so you have to watch this video vertassium you'll like that guy at least I like that guy. Um, those two, in, those two uh, questions, um, and then some misconceptions about global warming. Another potassium video. Both of these are going to be found on the um, classroom website. Write down the misconceptions, the 13 misconceptions he mentions, and what the actual truth is. He's kind of like interviewing himself in that one. Acid rain. You're just going to basically. Well, let me give you this part here. So let's let's we have a scale here. Acid rain scale. Um, 7 is going to be neutral. It goes from 1 to 14. Okay, so this is going to be like water, and this is neutral. Okay, over here is very basic. Uh, you might see the term alkaline used, um, and over here is acidic. Okay, um, you know, lemon juice over here, uh, coffee. Um, over here, water we mentioned before. Uh, basic um, things like ammonia, um, baking soda. Limestone. Okay. Um, okay, let's go on here. So a lot of this you're going to read answer the questions, read, answer the questions, read, answer the questions. Okay, remember when in doubt, go to your Fox book. Okay, keep scrolling down. All right, so let's do a quick summary. Again, if you have not completed everything up to this point, do so now and then come back to this video. Um, so, you know, acid rain, you know, we got to think about, well, what's actually happening here? Um, what happens is we have an increase in sulfur and nitrogen compounds released into the atmosphere. And what that does, it mixes with the rainwater and the rainwater and the nitrogen and sulfur um, substances will then produce acid rain. Now, interesting to note is that normal rain is about 5.6, which is slightly acidic. So anything below that, we're really talking about acid rain.
Okay, so what are some activities that can contribute to the problem? Um, again, burning fossil fuels. We really got to get away from those fossil fuels because they really are one of the biggest problem um, that we have um, today and it's causing our environment. If we can get rid of those fossil fuels, boy, a lot of these environmental problems will start to slip away. Um, you know, especially in the, the factory region in this one. Um, less, and, less so with the burning or, you know, like uh, driving cars, but it still contributes quite a bit. Okay, what does it result in? A um, couple things. We, the rainwater that's acidic will damage plants or at least leave it susceptible to be attacked. Okay. To disease. Okay, damages in such a way. Um, not so um, lowers pH in the um, in in the lakes, which will kill fish, algae, and, and basically what you have you have some times you have these dead lakes. Um, a lot of problems in the Adirondacks, um, at least for a while there was and still is contributing today. So how can we help? Um, again, reduce your fossil fuel use. Okay, uh, drive less, or or use alternatives. Okay, we mentioned that earlier on, um, and then um, use conserve your energy. Okay, and. Then you're just going to answer these questions again. Once you finish these qu questions, uh, make sure you see Mr. S when done. Let's make sure we got the correct answers. Okay. Thank you very much.